The Other Room is a series of poetry readings which has been taking place in Manchester for nearly seven and a half years now. It's organised by James Davis, Tom Jenks and Scott Thurston and it takes place normally bi-monthly at the Castle Hotel on Oldham Street. Uh, through the summer generally there will be events June, July and August and sometimes there are uh, special and one-off events either elsewhere in Manchester or in other cities uh, throughout the year. So the most recent reading, which was on uh, last Wednesday, that's the 19th of August, was the 56th uh, edition of The Other Room. On this occasion the readers were the poets Rachel Sills, Michael Zand and also myself and I was not reading, I was doing uh, sound out, I was doing my vocal improvisations. Uh, I will talk a little about what I did but I want to concentrate mostly on Rachel and on Michael because obviously I can be much more objective about them and it's more interesting to me to, to talk about what they did. I wasn't at all familiar with Michael's poetry. Uh, I haven't read anything on the page, I haven't seen him perform live. The, really all I'd seen of him was a short video of him reading which went up on the Other Room uh, website in the run-up to the uh, event. Rachel I'd seen much more of. I've seen her perform around Manchester quite a lot over the last three or four years. And she was the, the first reader on the night. Rachel, I find, has a very deceptively low-key, modest, uh, simple style of reading. Um, which sort of disguises the fact that the poetry is, is quite uh, sharp and that there's a lot of interesting things going on within it. Um, one of the things that I find with Rachel's poetry is that she has usually a very strong central image or, or conceit or idea around which a poem or a sequence of poems will be based and that there are a lot of interesting things which can spin off from that. Uh, and and that, was, that was very much the case uh, on Wednesday. The, she read from uh, two long sequences. The first one was uh, a sort of set of poems towards a, a dictionary of, of leggings. And the second one was a series of poems about rain. Um, which I had, a, I had some more associations personally with the second set, but I find I have slightly less to say about it, to be honest. Um, the first set of poems about leggings, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot um, that, that, that spins off from that. Uh, you're talking about, about clothes, you're talking about fashion, and once you're talking about particularly women's clothes and fashion, then you have all these issues and questions of, of male gaze, of, of why clothes are worn, do you wear things to be comfortable, do you wear things to impress other people, do you wear them to say something about yourself? Um, and what do, what do other people make of them, what do your clothes say about, about you, what do they say about you socially, what do they say about your gender, what do they say about your identity? And, and a lot of those themes did seem to be in the poems, sometimes more explicitly than, than others, which makes them sound very heavy, you know, it makes it sound like this was a, a sort of note towards a semiotics of leggings, which it kind of was, arguably. But there was, there was also a lot of other things going on, and, and the poems were, were funny, they were enjoyable, they were identifiable, there were things you could relate to within them. Um, it'll be an interesting sequence to see uh, whenever, it, it, whenever it gets published, whatever it gets published alongside. Um, and I, I think, as far as I can make out, the audience was, was totally on board. Um, I understand that Rachel doesn't, or, or at least says she doesn't much like performance, but for me she does perform 
uh, tremendously, tremendously well, and, and she she did on the night, and, and certainly with those poems, that it, it, it's they they worked very well, uh, being being read in her style. The, the second sequence was uh, a set of poems about rain, which I suppose is uh, an inevitable, if not cliched, subject to come up with in, in Manchester. But the, the poems were were anything anything but cliche, uh, far from it. Um, as I said, I had a set of associations in my own mind um, already, uh, just just by the mention of the subjects, and it's it's worth mentioning those because. They probably, to an extent, coloured my reaction. Um, what, I, what I had in mind was uh, first uh, Joris Evans' uh, film Rain, Reagan, uh, which is a an early black and white documentary, and it's 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 looking at, at rain on the streets of a city and how that looks. What I also had in mind was the uh, the, the cliché about there being 50 words for snow in, in the Eskimo language. I mean, there's, a, there's a, a, a controversy about that which I don't want to get into. Uh, Wikipedia has a reasonably good primer about, about that. Um, but I, you, you know, it's certainly wondering about how many English words are there for, for rain how many ways of, of describing it, and, and does it actually say anything particularly about a, a place or a people that they would have um, all these words for rain. Beyond uh, the associations that I had, I don't really have particularly strong abiding memories of the actual poems, which is not to say they were, they were bad. I, I, um, I think they were perhaps more works in progress, they were perhaps more dense and, and, and less obviously funny than the Leggings poems, which it's, it's always a bad um, thing for me to have to concentrate uh, at poetry readings. I know that you have to and I know that you should, but I find, I find language somewhat difficult to, to, to follow in, in, it, in its spoken form and its written form anyway. Um, and so poetry readings with their very condensed language quite often are difficult for me to process. So <laughs> I, did, I did like the poems, they did conjure up some images on the night, well certainly of images at least of rain. I couldn't necessarily tell you much of, of what they were about, unfortunately. But The Other Room will post up video of Rachel's reading, and you can go and check them out for yourselves, and I have no doubt that they'll be uh, published in, in, in book form or pamphlet form at, at, some form, at, at some point in the future. Michael's reading was also uh, fairly low-key. Um, he read from a single sequence again with a, a fairly strong uh, central theme. Uh, this was from a, a book, a recent book, published by Shearsman called The Messier Objects. And The Messier Objects were uh, a series of deep space bodies seen by um, an astronomer Messier and cataloged by him in 1771. Uh, he was interested in, in comets, uh, and these were objects which he'd seen and which were not comets, and so his purpose in cataloguing them was so that he wouldn't uh, have to waste his time uh, in, in mistaking them for, for comets. Subsequently, it turns out that what he was looking at were uh, nebulae and clusters and galaxies, so they were very interesting and important objects in their own right, but they were not what he was interested in. Um, it's obvious that there's less of, a, of an obvious set of associations uh, with that than, than there is with uh, Rachel's poems, particularly the Leggings poems, but I guess you have this idea of mistaken identity, misattribution, 
uh, ideas of obsession or, or, or passion, um, clearly the idea of, of cataloguing things, of describing, classifying, categorizing. Um, so that th there are certainly those ideas swirling about. What I found myself concentrating on a little more simply because I was less familiar with his work was not so, not so much his delivery as the poems, the way the poems themselves were written. And what I found was there was a very characteristic style. There were, the, the poems were minimal. They used short sentences, they used short clusters of sentences. There was a lot of uh, space in them. And they use language in a slightly hesitant way. There were ideas that weren't developed. There were sentences that didn't finish. Things w were started and then abandoned. And it didn't seem to be a hesitancy born of lack of confidence or, or out of... Uh, not knowing what to say next. It seemed to be more a case of ideas and things and, and their descriptions being provisional, being open to interpretation. Unusually for me, I, I felt the readings from both Rachel and Michael were, were much too short. Quite often I feel readings are about the same length or that they might be a decent length but they've slightly outstripped my attention span which is more reflection on me than on any poets I have to say. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I've sort of written less about the other room in recent years than I did early on. At, th at that time early on it was a case of starting to familiarise myself with new a new poetics that I didn't know about previously and trying to come to terms with it. As I've gotten slightly more comfortable with the way things are written that's been less of a pressing need and so the idea has been to try and concentrate more and more on what the poetry is about and what I thought about it and I'm not really terribly well qualified to do that because as I say my attention tends to wander. Um, I really need to read the poems a few times, hear them read a few times before I feel I have anything much intelligent to say. Uh, as I mentioned I did perform myself. I was uh, kind of a late addition. Uh, a reader called Sarah Kelly was meant to perform but was unable to make this event. I assume she will uh, crop up at a later other room and I'm, I'm sure she'll be well worth seeing. I was asked with about 10 days to go to, to read here. I, I decided that yeah, I, I would like to do that and Rather than just doing my normal improvisation, I wrote something, so it ended up being a semi-improvised piece. So I spent ten days writing, rehearsing, trying to, to get a structure that I could improvise within, and performed that on the night. And I think it went well. It, it felt like it went well. I was happy with all the sounds I was making. Uh, it seemed to hold together as a cohesive piece. Uh, the improvisations didn't feel tired. I wasn't repeating particularly anything I'd done in rehearsal. And there were, there were genuine reactions of the kind that I like. There was certainly some, some laughter in the audience. That's good. Uh, sometimes it suggests people are uncomfortable. Sometimes it suggests they don't. They might be a bit embarrassed. They don't quite know what to make of you. Sometimes they might actually just be laughing at you or at the ridiculous sounds or absurd things that you're doing. Um, and I like it, I like I like any kind of reaction like that. I, I like it when people don't enjoy uh, the, the, the performances as well as when they as well as when they do. Um, 
for me, it, it, it felt like it went well and, and people had, had things to say. I haven't managed to hear my recording. I forgot to make my own recording of it. So again, it, I'll have to wait until the video gets posted on the, on the other room um, to, to see how it went. But I'll, I'll also make sure that I watch uh, Rachel and Michael's videos so that I can try and, and get a bit closer to formulating a, a, a kind of more sensible reaction to them. Um, but yeah, if you're ever in Manchester, uh, particularly if you're in Manchester during the months when uh, the other room is happening, then I'd really recommend that you get along to it. Uh, look out also, they do produce an anthology on a yearly basis, so there's now been seven of those. Um, it's uh, and look at look at their website. That's a great resource. I mean, it's not as huge as something like like Ubu Web, but there's obviously a mass of material that's been accumulated over seven and a half years, and there are videos of performers from most of the events, if not all, and it's a, a veritable who's who of fascinating poets. Uh, particularly people from linguistically innovative scene and experimental scenes and people who may not be poets but whose, langu whose artwork intersects with uh, poetry and, and, and language art in general. And I think that's all I have to say about The Other Room. Uh, I'll see you next time whenever that is and whatever I'm talking about.